Hey, what if they had a global warming summit and nobody came? Could happen. Cancun. Last year, Copenhagen. And now it's, Co- uh, it's uh, Cancun. People uh, supposedly flocking in from all over the place to uh, spew all sorts of greenhouse gases to get down there. And uh, talk about how we can save the planet. Dr. Roy Spencer, um, longtime friend of the show. He's also the uh, team leader on the Aqua, NASA Aqua satellite that actually measures temperature uh, all over the globe. Uh, is heading that way, I believe, in a few days. Uh, Roy, how are you? Good, Phil. How are you doing? I'm doing extra good. So you're, are you heading down there in all this mess? Yeah, going down there on Monday. It looks like the cold air that's come down through uh, Nashville and Alabama, where I'm at, is heading on down through Cancun, which is no doubt another sign of global warming. It's, <laughs> yeah, I know in Copenhagen uh, they got a big blast of winter weather when, when they were having this thing. Wouldn't that not be ironic that they have another blast of cold weather as this thing gets underway? Uh, yeah, well, some people call it the Gore effect. If Al Gore goes any place, it seems like it's unusually cold. That's right, or unusually boring. So, <laughs> ah, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but <Ouch>. seriously, <laughs> so let, let me ask you because you check, uh, you know, temperatures from uh, you know around the world, and you've been how long has this uh, Aqua satellite been up there? Well, the Aqua satellite has only been up there since two thousand two, but it. it is the last in a series of instruments that have been flying on, oh, about a dozen satellites since 1979. So we've been monitoring temperatures with a series of satellites uh, for over 30 years now. And what are we, are we seeing any uh, significant warming or cooling or anything well, different? Well, yeah, there, there has been significant warming, average warming, in the last 30 years. Now, by significant in climate terms, I'm talking, uh, you know, a few tenths of a degree C, you know, probably the better part of, of a degree Fahrenheit height, I guess. I'd have to look and see. Uh, That's pretty significant in climate terms. Uh, Where I depart from the consensus on the science of this is that I think the warming is mostly natural, whereas, you know, the UN uh, claims that it's all or mostly man-made. Because we've seen warming and cooling uh, multiple times over the last hundred years anyway. I mean, we're going through the 1970s, and they were talking about the, the, the new ice age coming in. Right, and that's one of the amazing things about the scientists that work on this these days is they don't want to talk about natural climate cycles. Uh, they pretty much have decided that no such thing exists. Uh, in other words, you know, there wasn't a little ice age, that that was just something localized to Europe, and there wasn't a medieval warm period. That was something that was just localized to Europe and Greenland, where the Vikings were. Uh, you know, they, they pretty much claim that, that there's no such thing as natural climate change anymore. It's all due to mankind, which I think is ridiculous. And there are a minority of scientists out there, usually in our later years, where we're willing to, you know, we can take the risk of, of speaking out and losing our funding, <laughs> right. uh, uh, that claim that, that, uh, that they're wrong. Yeah, I believe it, I, I, his name escapes me. I think it may be Professor Dimming that did the borehole uh, uh, the borehole study, and they, they did boreholes all over the, the world on every uh, continent, and they found out that the uh, medieval warm period and the Little Ice Age were not uh, local, they were global. Uh, exactly. Yeah, I had forgotten about that. That's actually uh, one of the only ways, or it's the only way I know of, to directly measure temperature far in the past, like centuries past, is where they... They go down, you know, like you said, and into the Greenland ice sheet. They can go down deep enough, and, and they can reconstruct what past temperatures were based on the temperature of the ice down, like, let's say, 1,000 meters or 2,000 meters. Uh, so it's an actually, actually a direct uh, temperature measurement, that, but they still have to sort of reconstruct what that means in terms of what the climate was back then. Yeah, but it's interesting to see that you know we've we've seen warming and cooling and warming and cooling. Then all of a sudden, uh, when we see a little warming in the twentieth uh, century and the end of the twenty first century, people start to freak out and they they want to do something about it. So you're going down there. You're going to be with Lord Moncton. I understand. Uh, is this some kind of panel discussion you guys going to be at? Well, no. At these UN meetings, this is the sixteenth conference of the parties they've had. So this is something that goes on ad infinitum. These these UN meetings, uh, there are non governmental organizations that show up uh, also, and they have booths there, uh, you know, that give out information or put on little shows with people in polar bear costumes, which I'm not going to do. Uh, but <laughs> but the group I'm with is called CFACT, Committee for a Constructive Tomorrow, which tries to balance uh, the needs of of humanity against the needs 
the supposed needs of nature. I don't, I don't know that nature has actually informed us of what its needs are, but, you know, we, we try to infer what its needs are, uh, sort of bring some sanity uh, back to the whole global warming debate. Uh, so I'll be there in a booth uh, with CFACT, uh, being sort of their uh, scientific representative, along with Lord Moncton. And it's, it's just to provide a presence there so that, you know, people can come by and ask, hey, what do, you, what do you guys do? You know, and of course, everybody assumes that we're part of the environmental movement, and that way we can say, no, actually, we're, we're more of the belief that, that global warming is, is a natural thing, and here's some information. So, you know, let's just try to provide information to all of the people that are, that are down there that are on the other side of the of the issue. But what you'll find though, Roy, is when you get down there, and I'm sure if you've done this before, these people will get absolutely furious at you. Uh, well, let's see. I've only been to one other one. I, I was at one several years ago in Montreal, and uh, they didn't get furious with me. It it was an entertaining trip, though. My gosh, it's 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 a different world that these people live in. Um, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it's it's bizarre. Uh, you know, they're 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 in their own. It's a lot of elitists, is what it is. Right. Uh, who, who you know they they are totally immune to what the public thinks, what the public believes, what the public wants. They are immune to, like, ClimateGate, the, the release of emails from last year, which showed the bad behavior of the scientists on their side. You know, they're going to they're gonna keep planning and having meetings, you know, in exotic locations around the world so they can decide how the rest of humanity should live. That's, that's their goal. And how ironic, though, it is that they're, they're, if they believe that greenhouse gases are the problem, they're spewing them all over the place just to get down there to get together and talk about this. I know it's uh, the hypocrisy is amazing, and yet they, it seems like they don't recognize it. And I think that's, you know, my interpretation of that is that is part of the elitism. They don't right. see hypocrisy there because, you know, they're part of the chosen class that's 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 trying to save humanity from itself. Yeah, we just had a story yesterday from uh, Bono is, uh, and you two are doing a tour their U two tour of uh, of Australia, and they show up in. What they say, fifty-seven tractor trailers. I think they had uh, multiple um, jumbo jets that brought them in and their equipment and everything. Mm-hmm. They're fifty-seven tractor trailers that will travel around the country so they can put this show on when they would just as well be, uh, you know, just to sell their music on the internet and stay home. But they won't do yeah. that. Yeah, and and Bono has been an activist. Uh, actually, he's he's one of the few that has actually done some good in Africa. Right. Uh, you know, supported some good causes, uh, and rather than just wacko causes. <laughs> yeah, but on the global warming thing, he's right in there with the rest, with Al Gore and the rest. I guess I'm uh, assuming that Al Gore is going to be at this thing, right? Uh, you know, I'm. I don't know whether he is or not. I, I have no idea. He's not going to come by your booth. I kind of doubt that. <laughs> And, of course, well, no one will be allowed to ask him questions. No, 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 no. We know we saw what happened to Philip McAleer when he tried to ask him. They cut his microphone off. So. Yeah, and did you hear that in the last couple of days he has officially been banned from this meeting? The, yeah, I saw, I got yeah I got an email from uh, from uh, Philip McAleer about that about two or three days ago. That's right. They, they tried to get in. No, 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 you can't come. So they've been officially banned. And I yeah. guess because they dared ask the emperor a question and dared direct a question to him, uh, and, and, and if you ever saw that video, which we have part of that in our movie, that's it's our movie really is going to come out. I am going to send you a copy of it so that you can you can help us with the final editing on this thing. But we're getting real close to it. They just see every time we think we're through, then something else comes along that we've got to put into this thing. I don't know whether you saw the ten ten thing a couple of months ago where they had the. The video where they were blowing up little school children who didn't believe in global warming. Did you see that? Oh on the yeah, end? that's uh, just appalling and, I, and amazing. Yeah. And I said that's got to be in the movie, so we had to go back and we had to edit that in. So and when well, you we know, edit in, we had to edit out. So eventually, you're going to have to say, "Well, that's enough. Let's go with well, it." Well, I think we have. We've gotten to that point now, and now we're we're through with it. We're finished with it, and so I'm going to send you your copy. I do have your address that you sent me, so we're going to get that in the mail to you and let you let you see what you think of it. Because I want to make sure that when we go through. People like you, uh, Roy, and and uh, and your um, colleagues uh, on this side of the issue, that we make sure that everything is completely factual because that's what they'll do. If we find one little thing that is wrong in the movie, they'll take that and blow it out of proportion and try to discredit the whole thing. That is exactly what they'll do. Well, we're going to make sure that we we do this thing right. So, when are you heading out to Cancun? Uh, Monday. Okay, and you're going to be there for how long? Oh, just through the week, uh, Monday through Friday. 
Well, good. Are you going to be uh, do any cliff diving or anything like that while you're there, or just going to be in a booth? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Getting a little old for that. You're not taking in fact, your speed even when off? I was young, I, I don't think I would have tried no, that. No, I wouldn't try that myself. So, well, it should be interesting to find out. Now, I'm, I'm uh, assuming that the, the group that you're going with has a website where people can learn more about the this side of the issue. Yeah, I believe it's cfact.org, C-F-A-C-T. Okay, cfact.org. All right, Dr. Roy Spencer, pleasure as always. Good luck on the trip, and, and uh, uh, don't let Gore get too close to you. Uh, yeah, okay. He may have something that's catching. I don't know. All right, Roy, thank you very much. Thank you, Phil. All right. We're going to be back in a moment. 1-800-618-PHIL. That's, one, that's a brave man right there, going in and getting in the middle of all those people. Because I'm telling you, I have seen them. I've been around them. And these people, a lot of them, not all of them, but they're crazy. I mean, because this is like a religion of these folks, and you don't dare tell them they're wrong. <laughs>